Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our LinkedIn Tuesdays. We're very, very glad you're with us. It's March 9th, 2021. Um, just thank you for joining us today. Uh, for those people who are using Zoom, as soon as you have a question, if you think about anything, please just put it right in the chat box. Uh, that way you don't have to think about it. And then uh, as our speaker takes a break, we'll be sure to get those questions answered for you. For those on Facebook, please just send your questions into the comment field. I am monitoring that feed. For those on Zoom, if you're using a PC or a Mac, we ask that you use the speaker view, which is what's in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, where that red arrow is, you can grab that and you can drag it to the right and left to change the aspect ratio of how big or small the speaker is. Please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and on the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you happen to post a comment in the chat box or have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comments, name, and picture to appear. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morse. I founded Career DFW back in 2008 to help you unemployed in the Dallas Fort Worth area. In 2012, I launched CareerUSA.org uh, to help people outside the Dallas Fort Worth area. I've written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search That You May Not Know. It's available on Amazon for 15 bucks. I uh, facilitate and lead the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. I've been doing that since 2007. At the end of this presentation, I will tell you about our upcoming programming that we've got going on this Friday. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. Well, I'm really uh, excited that every Tuesday we have four outstanding speakers to talk about LinkedIn. Uh, everybody talks about LinkedIn from a little bit different aspect. They uh, emphasize a little bit different kinds of things. And uh, hopefully you learn something every week. And I know that our speakers even go back on a month to month basis and they actually change up their presentation to you know, see what's new and what's going on. So uh, four great speakers join us every Tuesday. You will learn something every week when you do join us. So this uh, week, our speaker is Locke Alderson. He's a career consultant. Uh, contract recruiter, recruiting consultant. Uh, his talk is going to be how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies that gets results. So uh, Locke, thank you for being with us and it's all yours. Okay, Jeff, thank you. Set up my slideshow. Just from the beginning, not set up, go all the way to the left. There you go. Oop. Well, as Jeff mentioned, my, my name is Locke Alderson. There's a little bit of my bio up there. 42 years in recruiting with a number of companies that are shown. I've been working with Ocean Job Transition since 2001, and officially as a career consultant with Mall International starting in 2013. I was with them for four and a half years, and then they sold out to Lee Heck Harrison. I was with Lee Heck Harrison for a couple of years after I was laid off from Mullen International. If anybody would like, even though this is recorded by Jeff and it's on uh, YouTube and on Facebook, I think, Jeff, if you can send me an email to lockalders at gmail.com, I'll be happy to send you a copy of the slide deck. So well, that's kind of where we are this, this afternoon. Let me get this. And I'll go ahead and get started with our presentation. Why, why do you want to use LinkedIn for job hunting? These are the topics we want to talk about. Why do you want to use it? We're going to talk about your profile, your headline, and the, the different sections of that. I'm uh, also going to talk about how, recruiter, how do recruiters search for people on LinkedIn, and how do you search for jobs on that, and how can you optimize your profile so that you'll get found when recruiters search for you, and how do you search for people that you want to get in touch with to share your your profile or your resume. And then I'm going to have, at the end, we've got a homework assignment for you to take with you. Okay, but why do you want to use LinkedIn? Originally, LinkedIn was designed as a tool for networking by sales and marketing professionals. Well, recruiters, because they're ever alert for new ways to contact people and get in touch with, touch with them, they adapted it and is now the number one tool used by recruiters and hiring managers to find and source candidates. It's not their only reason, but it's the main reason that they're using it. 
And one of the reasons is that there's so many people on LinkedIn. There's 750 people, 750 million people worldwide, and about 160 million here in the US. 92%, it's estimated 92% of hiring managers and recruiters use it as a major sourcing tool. And at any given point, any given day, there are many, as many as 30 million employers and over 20 million available jobs on LinkedIn on a given day. And at the same time, of those recruiters that are online, there's many as a million and a half, million, million four hundred thousand recruiters looking to find and engage talent. So that's kind of the reasons to use LinkedIn. If you're not familiar, most of you who are on today are probably signed up with a LinkedIn account. And so if you're not, you can go to YouTube and look up LinkedIn for how to sign up and fill in your profile. And it all starts with your profile. And this is a picture of my profile. You notice a couple of things, but this is my edit version. You notice the blue pencil so I can change things. But I got a professional headshot in the background or banner photo in the back. I've got my name. You can put after your name, you can put something like an MBA or CPA if you want. LinkedIn frowns on putting anything else like real estate agent out there. And you might get uh, an email from LinkedIn saying, we're putting you on suspension for a few days till you clean up your act. Below that is your headline, and you can see that. It used to be 120 characters. They've expanded that now to 220 characters. And there's some other things. There's the connections that I have, and my contact information. I've also opened up the open to work section, which is something that's relatively new. It used to be open to opportunities, but they've changed that last fall to open to work. So that's my headline. I want to take a look at that. And a clear headline that you want to have some of the things that you've got. We'll go over the rest of the sections on LinkedIn as we progress and then how to use it. How do you go about increasing your ranking? Because when LinkedIn does a search, it evaluates a number of things, the skills and the employment, the job titles and things of that nature. But it also looks for somebody who's got a complete profile and filled in all the blanks, if you will. And the top ranking is an all-star. It used to be they had a pie chart which showed you how close to the top you could get. I could never remember getting closer than 95%, but All-Star is the top and that's the rating that I've achieved. You need a that professional headshot that I'm looking for, that I mentioned, and a background or banner photo. Banner photos are available on, on uh, Google. You can just Google that and do that. Or if you've got a portfolio of, of pictures that you want to choose one from, mine was a landscape picture that I chose from a trip to the Caribbean. The headline, that's typically the title of the job that you're applying for. And if you don't fill something there in there, it's going to default to the title of your last job, which may not be the job that you're ultimately looking for. Open to the work is just underneath your headline. And that's one of the things that you want to fill in as well. It lets people know that you're looking for work. And those are the things that you want to have that you can tell people about. And it allows you to put a number of different job titles in there as well. The about section is used to be called the, the summary section. Is an overview of your career using keywords from your profession. Okay, also to stress accomplishments, and we'll take a look at some uh, some summaries as we go along. Your contact information, while it may be in your connect in the contact information at the top of your profile, unless we're first degree connections, I may not be able to get hold of you or send you an email because many of you haven't opened up those settings in your privacy settings. So one of the ways to get around that, if you don't want to open up your privacy settings, is to include your email and your phone number on the top line, on the first line of your about section. And that's, you may have it already in your about section at the bottom, but put it again at the top as well. Because the more clicks that I have to make to try and find how to get in touch with you, the less likely I am to make those clicks as a recruiter. The experience section should start out with your job title. And if it's an unusual title, you want to put uh, the generally used title and industry in the parenthesis of a description of your duties and the results of performing those duties and include keywords from your professions. We'll take a look at some experience sections as we go along. The next section is your skills from your profession and your endorsements. That's toward the bottom of the screen on your profile. You can have as many as 50 different skills there and you want to do that. We'll show you how to change out some of those because if you don't choose them, LinkedIn will choose three for you and the endorsements that you have that accompany those. You wanna include your education awards, certifications, and all the professional development that you've had, because you've got plenty of space in LinkedIn, more so than you had on a resume, much more space. Again, one of the profiles that I look at will just simply talk about somebody's college degree or that they went to college. 
They don't talk about award certifications, professional development, the things that they've done since they got that degree. And recommendations, basically these are letters of reference from coworkers and former bosses. The more that you have, the easier it is for people to check you out. These are the things that people would say about you if they spoke to them on the phone. So that's what your profile or what you having those things completed will do for you. The next thing that you want to do is to make sure that your profile is, is a, can't read the top of it yet, but that you have a public profile that's open and you can edit it. Normally it would be, if you had a profile like this, it would have lock dash Alderson dash and number of letters and, and uh, numbers afterward. Okay, you can go in and change that by editing your perfect, your public profile over here and changing that, take out the numbers at the end. If you have a name like John Smith, Mary Jones, you're probably gonna to have to add Texas or Dallas or something like that. The next area that we, I'm gonna go back a minute. Okay. I can't touch my keyboard, it will touch it, move it forward. If it's an acceptable name, it will give you a green check if it's already been used or there's, or there's two dozen Mary Smiths already, it'll give you the red X. But if it is accepted, it'll give you a green check mark. Okay, is your public profile really public? What you want to do is to go into your privacy and settings over here and open up the different areas and check to make sure there's probably 40 or 50 different things that you can set so that people can see you. Some of those include, you know, who could see your email address, okay, and who could see your connections. If you're looking for a job, you want to, may want to make your connections private so that people can't see that. As they think, recruiters take a look at your connections. They figure that many of them are people like yourself and that builds up their recruiting list of people to contact about an open position. The other settings that you see, you see a number of other, is your public, is your public profile really visible? These are a number of the radio buttons that you can set by turning these things on, your background photo, headline. Those are the different things that you can set. Again, this is a picture of my profile with some of the summary sections underneath it. So let's, Let's take a look at the profile again. A profile like the resume gets six to 10 seconds consideration with a recruiter. And look at the things that are attractive to people. And again, you notice a background photo. And this one I have opened up, uh, used open to work. By checking on that, it lets all LinkedIn members see that. For those of you who don't want that or don't like that green banner from about five o'clock until about nine o'clock, you can limit it to limiting it to recruiters. The disadvantages of eliminating your recruiters, there may be some people that you know that are in your network that know about you, that hear about an opening and they can't refer it to you if you don't know you're looking. Again, letting all people know that. And it also allows you to add open to different work, open to different career opportunities like different jobs. There are other details that could be shown there are where you wanna work, where you live, if you wanna live and work within Plano, Texas, or if you wanna work in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, Again, those things are all available. To, or if you're open to working nationwide, or often to, open to working remote, there are areas that you can indicate as well. But that's what you look at when you get that. Now, open to work, you need to update that about every 90 days because they do some changes to that with LinkedIn in terms of the ratings that are available to you. Let's take a look at some headlines. These are a couple that somebody had on that. I've seen a couple of these over the years, people that's unemployed or retired. While they're truthful, they're probably not the most positive thing that you can say about yourself. Here's a couple other one, new, seeking new opportunity. I've seen that a number of times recently. And while that may again be true, again, it doesn't tell the whole story. It doesn't make it easy for the person reading your profile to know what you're looking for. And that's what you wanna do. You want them to acquire an interest. It's kind of like the old scratch and sniff in ladies magazine. They put the scratch and sniff inserts in there so that you just scratch it and sniff the different perfumes like that. Well, you're trying to arouse their curiosity and get them to click on more in your in your profile. Formerly VP of Finance is okay, except it, it truly identifies that the gentleman is not working as a VP of Finance anymore. Well, that's probably true. Just say VP of Finance. In today's economy, it's not uncommon for people to be unemployed or be formally in a certain profession, but, but you don't have to publicize that. Experienced digital design engineer seeking a new opportunity. Well, again, this is true. If a little bit more descriptive of what the individual is, if they're in digital design and they're in engineering, seeking a new opportunity. Here's, a, here's another one, somebody who's a social media strategist. 
proficient with public relations at market marketing and corporate communications. Again, this one uses three lines, that's about 120 characters. Here's one that's rather short, concise, supply chain with a pipe character with a space on either side, procurement, the pipe character and purchasing. Identifies pretty quickly what this, the background of this particular individual. Same thing here, a senior accountant with GL, it's okay to use abbreviation like GL, general ledger, uh, AR, accounts receivable, accounts payable, CPA, financial reporting costs. Again, executive assistant is a pretty proficient one. There's probably 35 or 40,000 of those in just the Dallas Fort Worth area. But by adding budgeting and event planning, it gives a little bit broader picture of what skills that you possess and what you've done. Same thing with IT project manager. IT recruiters or people who recruit IT professionals like a concise statement so that they could quickly judge, do I want to look further? This individual has an idle certification. And recruiters would know that it's a certification. Scrum master and agile as in terms of a methodology that they've worked with as a project manager. Again, pretty descriptive for an IT recruiter to identify this candidate as one they might want to look further at. The general manager with manufacturing and aerospace, again, pretty descriptive, but it narrows it down. He's got his background in aerospace and manufacturing. Again, somebody who's in another kind of manufacturing might not be as interested in this kind of a character. Let's take a look at how do you take some a good headline and make it better. VP of marketing and global marketing. That's a good one. Maybe you want to add something to it. VP of marketing, creating value for businesses through effective marketing strategies. Again, with your headline, it doesn't all have to be just proper nouns. It can go into the soft skills as well. Again, you want to amplify those in your experience section so that it comes clear that you've actually done those things rather than just talking about them. Project manager, program manager, sales manager. This describes people that I know in another networking group that I got. That's what they're looking for, a project manager, program manager. They don't want sales, but this one specialized in international business expansion. So that's a little bit better description of what somebody's looking for. Because again, you're trying to get my attention in six to 10 seconds to look further at your profile. Customer relations, customer service. You can see the difference of these. Also, you wanna check the open to work section of there. Again, it allows you to add locations where you wanna work, allows you to add up to five job titles and open to your status up for about 90 days. That lets people know you can limit it to just recruiters on LinkedIn. Again, LinkedIn recruiters have a software license that they take. I think the basic license for software for LinkedIn recruiter light is about is $100 a month and recruiter full-blown recruiter package is about $500 a month. Although I think our speaker, the speaker yesterday for you says he spent he spends about $19,000 a year on his LinkedIn licenses that he uses to search for people. Okay, another feature on your on your LinkedIn profile is your dashboard and your featured section. This is a picture of my, my dashboard. It's a static picture. You notice over here, people who've looked at your profile in the last 90 days. How many times did I look at postings? I posted the announcement about this meeting on LinkedIn, my LinkedIn account. I had about 500 people look at that posting and I've appeared in 160 uh, appearances. And notice this is an all-star rating is also on your, on your profile. Again, by clicking on the search appearances, and we'll do that in just a minute, you can look and see how many people, how you've appeared in search appearances and what the recruiters or hiring managers have looked for when they look to try and find you. Again, this just is allows you to add things to your profile. These are the, these are the presentations I've done over the years, the, the, the job hunting with LinkedIn. That's an older version of this presentation today. And if we move on and click on that search appearances, again, this is what appears. These are the words that are actually used by the recruiters to in their search. Again, they may have been looking for a recruiter to help them find a job, or looking for a recruiter in a company that could help them find a job within a company. And this is where those searchers happen to work. If you happen to find a company on there, right, maybe a company that's looking for someone like yourself, again, they might want to add those to your target list of companies. Let's take a look at the summary section, the about section. This is a pretty good one for a a financial planning and analysis leader or senior leader in that particular area. Notice it's got email is right at the top of the profile. 
is also spelled out FPNA, which is known by recruiters. But again, you want to use if you're going to use acronyms like this, you want to spell it out at least once so that it can be seen in that situation. As I mentioned, those summaries, the uh, summaries can also have soft skills in it. They can be first person, although in resumes you don't want to use first person. In your summary, you can have a first person and you can see what these look like. And as I said, if you want these slides, I'll be happy to send you the slide deck if you'll send me an email. But those are just some different examples of summaries. In the summary section, you have uh, 2,000 characters to play with. Some people that I see just have the first three lines that I mentioned there on that one. And then there's at the end right over here, there'll be a statement to see more. Well, what you're trying to do with that is to get somebody to click on that see more so they will see more. The experience section should have your job title, the dates of the company, company name and dates, your responsibilities, and you want to limit that to three to five lines. And then you can have some bullet areas of bullet areas of expertise or accomplishments. This just happens to be from some of my experience when I was with Oracle. Notice that it's got four lines there. There's a couple of bulleted accomplishments below that. And I happened to toss in an email that came from the director of recruiting when I left Oracle uh, saying we're going to be missed and they've done a good job. So those are the kind of things that you can include that. Also included is the icon for, for Oracle Corporation. You can include that. It's something else that stands out in people's minds. If you don't, if you're out of work, again, you have a date like 2020. Again, you may want to add a current position for, for this year. Again, LinkedIn adds counts value for everything filled out that you have a current position and current dates. You notice this one has a project manager, gives a title, a program manager. The company is he's looking for something in the telecommunications industry, so he puts that down. You look at the Dallas area. And while this is an old slide, I've kept it because it's so graphic in terms of, of what it tells people. He's working here and he's currently updates. He put the headline for the position and a description of the duties. So that's a description that you could add to that. It doesn't have to model this one, but it's a good example of one that you can use. Skills and endorsements are a little bit further down on your profile. And again, this is a section where you can have up to 50, but LinkedIn will choose three for you. Again, you notice here that there's an area where you can type in a text. If you type in something like data analyst, okay, and it's not one that they recognize, it will not let you add it. You can just click on one of these down here with a plus, and they will appear there as well. Okay, the next area, what you want to do with those skills. Well, LinkedIn will limit you to three skills that are shown, skills and endorsements. Okay, and then you'd see the C more down there at the bottom, or add a new skill here at the top. And these are the endorsements that I've had for career counseling, executive search, and recruiting. And notice the endorsement that I had, it allows you to have up to 99 that it will show on this. Again, so if those are not the three skills that I want to show up when on my profile, what you could do is to come over to the skill section, click on that blue pencil, and it will allow you to update those. If I clicked on this blue push pin, career counseling would disappear down to the group below, and I could go to the group of things below, like internet recruiting, click on this push pin, and it would come up to the top. I can rearrange the order at the top by holding my cursor down on these four lines over to the right and drag that to the bottom of that section. Or going below, if you wanted to alphabetize, all the things in industry knowledge, you can do that by dragging and rearranging them here. So there's a little way to make it a little more personal and identify with who you are. So what do recruiters really look for when they're looking at, at, at profiles? Well, the first thing that they're probably looking for is a match on keywords, okay? How many of the keywords from the job posting do they do are in your profile? The next area that they're gonna take a look at is job title or the job titles your current and past positions, the jobs in your headline, in your open to work section, and in your employment section. So that's another major area. And then taking a look at your skills. They may also take a look at industries. If somebody is looking for healthcare, they might check that and not eliminate candidates who don't have healthcare industry experience. It simplifies the recruiter search. Okay, remember I mentioned we started out with 750 million people in LinkedIn. So when a recruiter looks on a recruiter search, We'll see that in a minute, how they can narrow it down to a couple of hundred and very, very quickly with a number of keystrokes. Your education, if that's important, and location. Most of you don't want to drive more than 25 miles to work, so you limit your searches to 25 miles when you do searches online. 
Well, the recruiters, when they look, they also look and limit their searches to 20 candidates living within 25 miles. There are ways to get around that if, you're, if you live further away. But again, be aware that there are some limits like that. And that search is available by the location you've entered in, in the open to work section of your, of your profile. Once recruiters have narrowed it down, they'll look at your summary and your employment history. So how does recruiter do, how does LinkedIn do searches? Okay, well, on a recruiter search, LinkedIn gives every profile a score and each section of the profile gets a score. Your activity is another area that gets a score for values on that. How, how often you've updated your profile. Hop, high scores move to the top of a section. In other words, if everybody's a recruiter, in the Dallas area, I looked yesterday and there were 35,000 people have recruiter in their profile uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. The way that you would move up in that is to be an all-star rating is one of the ways. The activity that you have on LinkedIn contributes to that as well, for those who have recruiter in their profile. Keywords I mentioned already, skills, exact match on the job title in your current and previous positions, and your headline, that you're open to work. Geographic location is important for some things. And we'll take a look at a couple of examples in just a minute. All-star status, and first and second degree connections and having over 5, 500 connections. Those are things that raise you up to an all-star status. And comments, activities on posts and articles. I mentioned that I posted information about this presentation today and I had about 500 people out of my network look at those uh, profiles and comment on the, on the posting. Here's an actual recruiter search. This is one from Kurt Vandem uh, presentation a number of weeks ago. Again, these are the things that they can search to narrow the search down very quickly from 750 million people to 750 people total. That's a pretty drastic reduction. You know all the other different areas that they can check on over here. Spoken languages, locations, skills and assessments. Those are things that they can take a look at. So that's a search entry table, a recruiter that has recruiter light or recruiter software license from LinkedIn. Well, let's take a look at a couple of results from some of those searches. This one happens to be for a product manager in Seattle, Washington. You notice over here in the Seattle area. They're willing to consider a senior product manager. They'll also consider candidates from the San Francisco area and the skill sets that they're looking at are product management, product marketing, and competitive analysis. The companies, they have some preference for companies that will give a little bit of extra consideration for companies in the Seattle area, Microsoft, Amazon, and Food Corporation. And the schools, University of Washington appears down here at the bottom. That particular search drew about 6,900 responses. Again, if you're following a company or have company connections, that's another factor that's there entering that. So that's just one particular search that came about. Here's another one from Chicago. This was for a project manager in Chicago because that's a very popular uh, qualification and job title. It drew about 43,000. If you notice that they were looking for the Chicago area, but would consider candidates from New York or San Francisco. They want a strategy and analytics as part of those kinds of things. Okay. That had 229 people, 904 people were following a company's brand that the search was conducted from. Let's talk about searching for you. Okay. The entry areas that you want to take a look at, again, you can enter the search box, enter a job title, and enter the location. If you don't enter a location, the search will default to the United States, okay? So you'll have to refine your search when you go to locations, and we'll take a look at the filters in just a minute on something like that. This is an actual search for a senior accountant here in the Dallas area for Plano, Texas. I know there's a search turned up, uh, sorry, excuse me, jobs in the Plano area. This turned up 144 jobs. They're within 25 miles of, all, of that location. And again, these are some of the filters that you could choose on. There's another one over here that says all filters. If you click on that, and that's the next screen, I think. Let's take that back. Let's go back a, just a second. You notice up here, there's a position, there's a job alert on and off. If I were to click on that, off and turn that on, you have the options of getting notices daily or weekly, thumbnail sketches, just about like this watch that particular job. And then at the end, it would turn that on and that would be the, that you could make an easy apply on that particular. But let's move on to filters. 
LinkedIn has changed this again in terms of their, this is a whole screen of filters and I was able to get most of them on this screen. LinkedIn now divides this up and allows it on the right half of the screen when you look at a job in the filters tab, it allows you to choose different things. The one thing I advise everybody to choose on is the one that says past within the past week. Reason being first response to an email, to an email, I mean, to a job posting on any job board, it's usually about three minutes and there can be a couple of hundred within the first hour. And sometimes you've gone, after you've seen a job and you've gone back to try and find it, it's no longer there. They've taken the posting out. They're no longer accepting applications. LinkedIn has added also something recently, and I think they picked this up from indeed.com, some salary data. Again, you could put salary preferences there that you're only looking for jobs over 100K. By checking that, it's going to eliminate those jobs that are below that, where they've identified the job salary. Again, there's an easy apply tab over here. Sometimes the easy apply will simply just take your profile and add that as your application. I don't recommend necessarily doing that. If the easy apply allows you to post a resume, it's a much better way to handle things. But you can notice also the, the number of the types of jobs that are available, the locations that you can choose, the companies, sometimes the companies are listed there and actually the industry that you're looking for. So again, if you're looking particularly in the information services and technology sector or computers, again, it allows you to check some of those. It also allows you to add an industry or a company that you're looking for. But you can use the filters that there's also over here a button that says to cancel or to clear it will take you back to your original search this was for a recruiter in dallas county okay and you notice that there were 2,000 jobs available doing that at that point in time when i did that but that's any time of those at that particular time when i did the search only 635 of them were fairly current jobs moving along why would you want to take a look at other people's profile on LinkedIn? Well, one, you can do a profile search to see if you show up and you look for a recruiter on people. Again, over here, there was had this tab. There's a people tab over here. And when you do that, the job, this was a jobs tab. If we look back, notice it's jobs here, you go forward. It's people here. If you click the down arrow, you get to that. In the Dallas Fort Worth area with recruiter, we're at this on this search, we're about 26,000 people. And if you don't show up in the first 10 screens, that's about 100 thumbnail sketches, you're probably not going to get found when somebody searches for a recruiter or an accountant or a financial analyst or a sales rep. Those are the different ways that you can do that. Okay, so that's the way to look at that. The other reason that you want to take a people's profile is because if you aren't showing up, take a look at some of those in the top 100, take a look at their profiles. What are the words that they've used? Use some of those words in your own profile to increase your ranking. When I used to be active in recruiting, more active than I am now, I would show up in the first two screens. Well, that's in the first 20 people, okay, out of about 26,000. But because I'm not actively recruiting I'm on LinkedIn every day, I show up down to about 100 if I'm lucky. You can also do a search by just using the search tab at the top. Somebody did a search or another presentation for the word lock. And you notice that there are a couple of ways that it shows up. Here's me, my profile. Here's a, a, here's a law practice here in the Dallas area. There's a hotel chain, okay? There's another information technology company. These are different ways that you can find results for people, okay? Just to search. Okay, you can search for people in your network. Again, you have a search and you can go up to my network. You can search the connections that are here and you can search for people by different filters as well. Again, these are some of the filters like first and secondary connections. Again, you're looking in the Dallas Fort Worth area. You may have a background that you're looking for people that you, that you might know that work at Lennox Corporation here in Richardson. And they were, you're looking for somebody, actually in this case, they were looking for somebody who was a recruiter or talent acquisition specialist at Lennox and Richardson. Okay. This is one where I did a search. I was looking to try and do that. I do, did a company search on that tab that's a down arrow. I was looking at a company called Med, Med, Med Analytics in Richardson along Bush Freeway. And I was looking for a recruit. When I did that and clicked on people, these are the people that showed up when I clicked on recruiter. 
here's Melissa Green Dexter is shown here that I can connect with her. She's open to connection. And connect with her that way. But this show the people who are in recruiting or resources at that company. So if you wanted to get your profile in their hands or your resume in the hands of the, one of the recruiters there, that's a way to do that. So we'll get down to, okay, for things your homework are coming to an end. Things that you need to do. You need to complete your profile, each section of your profile. You want to use the name that you're known by, the name that you'd like to be called by. Again, I use my middle name, okay, because that's the name I go by, but I'm actually John Locke Alderson Jr. So when the telemarketers call and they ask for John Alderson, again, I'll ask which one. The doctor's office called this morning and asked for John Alderson, and I know that they're, they're asking for me. So I didn't play around with the medical assistant at the, at the doctor's office this morning. Okay, but what do you want to be called by? Again, your headline. Use the job title or job titles of the positions you're looking for. If you don't include a headline, it's going to default to the last, the title of your last job. You want to complete the open to work section below your headline. You list up to five additional job titles and let, re let recruiters know that you're open to opportunities. You may want to limit it to recruiters or you can open it up to all of LinkedIn. If you do that, it does have that green banner from about five o'clock to about nine o'clock on your picture. You want to include your picture, I mean, your phone number and your email in the first lines of your about section. Make it easy for me to get hold of you. Again, if I have to work at it. I may not do that. I may go on to the next candidate. In your experience section, list the company names, the job titles, as I mentioned, because that's a searchable term. That's one of the ones that we saw in those searches. The duties that you have and the results, the measurable accomplishments that you've had, because they add credibility to your experience. You want to include the keywords from your profession. And your skills, you want, to, you want to select the top three in your profession, the ones that you want to present to the public when they look at your profile. Jeff, I'm going to turn it back to you. All right, well, we've got some questions here. So the first question is, what if you're looking for more than one title or type of position? What should you do? Again, you could do that in your headline. You can do that in your open to work section as well, okay? So that's an area that you could do that. I'm going to open up my, how do I do that? Uh, you want to stop sharing this and you want to share your. Yeah, okay. So I want to share again, huh? Yeah, so now you want to share your browser. Where's my browser on this thing? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Where do you keep your browser at? I know where I keep my browser at. Okay, let's take a look at my profile as well as we go on. But let's answer the question first. All right, uh, we're not seeing it. So if you're seeing it, if you see it, we're not, you're not sharing it with us yet. Okay, so share screen. I'm not going to be able to get to it, Jeff. Can't get to it. All right, I tell you what. Oh, here we go. Okay. Now we got it. I'm learning. You're going to teach me how to do this. We've only been trying it for a year now. <laughs> but I noticed some things, as I mentioned, the contact information is one thing. If I open that up, that's my contact information for people. But if you're not first degree connections, I may not have that. If you don't have it opened that up, I will not be able to see that. Again, open to. Again, this is open to only two recruiters. I've selected that, but this is my profile, not open to recruiters. If I change this and I go to over here, I'm open to work, but that's how you do that. Okay, that's saved. I'm going to take that off a little bit later. All right. So, so if somebody wants to do multiple titles, you say they should put it in there. I didn't hear. Look, here's here. I have done this right here. Yeah. These are multiple titles. I've used the pipe character, which is a, a shift character just above the enter key on most keyboard. I've used that. If you're going to do that, you want to have a blank space either side of that because otherwise, if I had consultant, pipe character, career, that's not a searchable term in terms of recruiter, what they're looking for. The other area, the open to work, there's five titles down here that I can look for. And there's see all details. Again, what you're looking for. 
Okay. Okay. What did I do, Jeff? Okay. That's some of the things that you could do on your recruit in terms of titles that you can have. You can have multiple titles there. You can go in and edit this periodically because your activity on LinkedIn, if you go in and change something, it's going to refresh your profile and it's searching for it. Here's my about section. I've got the contact information there, but notice that there's only three lines that show. I have to click on this as a recruiter to get the other things. Notice these are short statements or three or four line statements. And I've also added some highlights. These are speaking engagements I've had. I've added a, some titles, some different things as a recruiter so that the recruiter being there multiple times is gonna help them when the search is conducted and the different types of assignments I've had. I've also listed an area of specialties. This is designed just for the computer. Look for career or consultant or recruiter. Okay. And here is my, my dashboard. Notice the posting views. People have looked at those postings that I've made. People have looked at my profile, a number of search appearances I've had in the last 90, I can't remember whether it's 90 days or not. Well, let's ask some more, answer some more questions. Here's okay, uh, Chandra asks, how do I update my LinkedIn headshot? Okay, let's do that on mine. Okay, if I go to this blue pencil, this is for the background situation that I can drag to reposition the photo. If I click over on this one, that's how you do it. You can add a photo, edit, okay, or delete. That allows you to do, to do that. Okay. That one. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Next question. All right. Uh, Natalie asks, is it wise to include bilingual in the headline? Very definitely. Okay. It gives you a leg up and you want to take all those legs that you can get. Okay. I did a digital snap because not everybody's bilingual. Now it's not necessarily going to help you, but it won't, I can almost assure you it won't hurt you in a situation. But if they're looking for a bilingual recruiter or a bilingual accountant or a plant manager, those are things that you need to have. It's the right bilingual. Thank you. All right. Uh, now you can't count Texan, text speaking Texan as a second language. No, okay. Or Southern, so Southern, Southern drawl doesn't count either. <laughs> Be, being a Yankee or being from Brooklyn or Philadelphia. Okay. Uh, Jim asks, uh, do you know if LinkedIn will allow you to use your banner for commercial advertising? It's a maybe. It's one of those risky areas. You've signed, when you signed onto your LinkedIn account, you agreed to something. I don't, I don't, like, if you're like me, I don't read all the agreements that I, that I've agreed to. Again, but those are <laughs> some things in there that they, that they assume that you can do, but you can do that. I think you've got, you have your, in your banner picture behind you, you've got your contact information. You've also got a wordle of things out of your profile or out of your resume. And those are other things that you can do for that. So, it's worth trying that you could say real, you know, real estate agent, leading real estate agent, Collin County or something of that nature. I mean, you want to call it, call up my profile for just a second to show them what I've done with, you know, cause I'm sort of promoting a little bit. Yeah. I, in my original idea was to put in drugs that are in clinical trial there. And, you know, that's, that's information, uh, yeah. but it's also advertising. Uh, yeah. so, look how Je look at what Jeff has done with his profile. So oh, I've made it yeah. so that anybody with a public anybody who even if you just view it from Google, you don't even have a LinkedIn account, you'll see my email address, my phone number. Yes, I'm promoting my book, uh, and then a word cloud of who I am. So you know what I've done. So did, did those uh, keywords count in the? Uh, um, uh, That's a question I can't answer for you. Those okay. keywords there will not count because those keywords, that's a graphic. And so okay. LinkedIn is not going to count the graphic. Now, if you go down to my about us section, you'll see a lot of those words in my about section. Whoop, too far. Up, up, up a little bit more right there. If you open that up, you'll see as you page down, as you go down, you'll see I put a whole bunch of keywords there at the very bottom of it. So if anybody's searching, they'll find those keywords. Okay. That's another one. Open to new opportunities as a hashtag is another one that you can put. Now, Jeff doesn't have his phone number or his email address at the top. So I'll plus that in a little bit for that one. Yeah, but 
as soon as you see my profile, my phone number and email address is there. So that's why I that's why I didn't put it there because I I wanted to save those two or three lines for you know something a little bit more important. Right. Again, um, remember in the about section, it's the first three lines is all that shows up until I have to click see more. Okay, uh, another question here. Advice on using my maiden name and or married last name. Uh, you could, What are you known by first? That's the thing that I would... And what do, what do you go by? What's on your driver's license is another thing that you can look at. If you want to include both of them, the hyphenated last name, which some, some women like to do, okay? That's okay as well. Or to put your married name or your maiden name in parenthesis next to your married name. Leave a space outside of each side of the parenthesis, though. Right. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, it's always really funny. You see people who will put, you know, Christopher T. So and so, but when you talk to them, no, my name's just Chris. Well, then put Chris on your LinkedIn profile. Don't put Christopher because, right. you know, you want people to call you what it, uh, what they're doing here. You want to make it as easy as they can to get in touch with you to build a relationship or start a relationship. Uh, what section of LinkedIn do you recommend we put our top five strengths from Clifton Strengths? So wh while you're right there, you'll see my, can you pick my top five strengths out right, oops, too far. Leave, stay up there in the about section. You'll see right there, uh, strategic leader, uh, maximizing, if you see that second paragraph right there, uh, maximize, strategic leader, maximize, analytical, uh, responsive, deliberate. So I put my five words into a sentence because like if you were woo, people may not know what woo means, you know? So use common words or something to sort of explain to people who you are. And you see, there's my top five strengths listed right there at the very bottom. But I built them into a sentence and I think you should be able to do the same thing. It's the nice thing about strength finders, uh, you know, do it both ways. Build it into what you talk about and, and list them because it's always a good topic of conversation. Your about section, you can use those soft skills. It used to be that the people advised not to use soft skills because you couldn't support them. You know, established leader, you know, seasoned leader. Well, if somebody uses the word seasoned leader, has he got an assistant walking behind him with a salt shaker? You know, that's, that's the kind of thing that humorously that people think about when you do something like that. But if you can add something that verifies what you've done, you know, if you've been a sales leader, you know, top producer, give a, you know, give some idea what that top producer means. All right, got some... uh, let, let's see here. Uh, Jim, or Jeff, ooh, let's see here. Uh, Jeff asked, is LinkedIn jobs, is a LinkedIn job search good enough for all my job searching? Or should no. I also expand searches with other search engines such as Indeed, Monster, et cetera? Now, the two best search engines that are out there today are Indeed.com and LinkedIn.com. Those are the two. I liked Monster as a recruiter simply because of the volume of candidates that are on LinkedIn. I mean, on Monster. Career Builder is another one. There are a number of them that are out there. There's also some specialty job boards for your profession. You should be on some of those as well. So if you're just using LinkedIn jobs, you're doing the Barney Fife method of security by only carrying one bullet and put it into your pocket and only loading it when you need to. You want to, you know, you want to use everything you can because you never know what's going to, what's going to help you. We've got a little bit of time, Jeff, if we wanted to look for some job for somebody or want to take a look at somebody's profile today. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking here to make sure I got all the questions. Yep, got all the questions here. Uh, yeah, somebody want to pop their name in there. We'll look at your profile. Or look for them for a job. Or look for a job. Tell us, give us a company name. All right, we have a company name, I think of, uh, let's do Nike, N-I-K-E. Again, I'm using this rather than jobs. The Nike company, that supports one up here. So we can do that. And we came up with Nike. This is the corporation. And follow the corporation is one way to do that. But Jackie also has their own job board. Okay. And creating a job alert. I could do that here. Now we're looking, these are the jobs that they have. That's one way to look for jobs at Nike. Another way to look for jobs is to go over here. Come on. 
again, again, because I'm not putting anything in, if I just hit return, enter, this is Nike all over the United States. So I'm going to have, would have to put, if I were looking for something there, I would do that. Here's that all filters. Again, notice, move you out of the way, Jeff. Again, anytime I want to click past week. And again, it's now on the side of the screen. Again, companies, these are companies that might be carrying Nike or have Nike in, like Foot Locker carries Nike product, okay? You're looking for full-time or part-time kinds of jobs. And the easy apply, where are you looking? If you're looking for a position, again, and it's not one that's here, like in Austin, Texas, let's say you were looking for Dallas, you might want to put Dallas on there. It does not. You have to add that up on jobs posted when you go to jobs, okay? But that's a way to use a filter for something like that. Anybody else in terms of a job? Uh, there's another co uh, company here, Moog, M-O-O-G. Okay. Oh, I think they're up in, up in Oklahoma, but I'm not positive. It's aircraft manufacturer uh, out of Oklahoma uh, or Wichita, Kansas, I think. But they've got some remote locations where they're, they service those kinds of product. Torrance, California seems to be a location for them. Mountain View. Blacksburg, Virginia, these are different locations. So again, I would have company, and if I did it the other way, and I said, okay, I want Dallas. They didn't find any jobs in Dallas. Again, so again, you can limit your search to find out where that you want to look on something like that. Okay. Uh, see, can you try? I right, so let's try a job title. How about a regulatory writer? There you go. Okay. Now, if I click this. Because I had Kansas in there before, it's going to stay that way. But I'm going to say, okay, I want Dallas. It doesn't, again, I could choose Dallas, Texas, Dallas County, or Dallas, Georgia. So let's say the Metroplex and do a search. Now, it says past week because that's a result of my prior searches. Okay. The experience level of somebody is, is that you could select different levels. So for a lot of people, it's going to be mid senior, director, or executive type level. We had 37 results. Took it down to two for mid senior level people. Notice that the title regulatory writer is not the title of the job that came up. So regulatory writer appears in the body text of this job over here somewhere. Those are the requirements on the, the right hand side of the screen that they're looking for. And we'll get another one, Jeff. We've got a few more minutes. Uh, how about Abbott Laboratories? Okay. Again, either one of these will pick it up. And again, because I had past week there, the mid senior in the Dallas area. Okay, notice right. one thing here because I shortened it. You've got two S's on laboratories. Here we go, 26. Okay, but that's in the last week. I can narrow that down to the past 24 hours or I can open it up if it's job like level that somebody has experience in that's hard to find and there aren't very many candidates, I might open up my search to a month. Open it up here 
Again, these are different things. Again, we haven't narrowed it down in terms of the type of job at Abbott Lab, but this is kind of look, like looking at their job board, if you will. Locke. Yes, Barry could you Yes, could you try ABV, A-B-B-V-I-E? They're somewhat affiliated with Abbott, but I'm not exactly sure how. Notice from the intelligence is there, is right there, okay? Now the United States in the last month, these are things that ABV shows up. Now where they show up in here, probably going to be over here in the district manager. They may be carrying ABV as a product that they're representing. Okay. So past week, again, narrows it down to 39. Here's a medical writer. Let's see if we have that specifically. Biospace could be a company that's representing them. Different, like, like a bag man carries around a product to a different doctor's office. If you've ever been to the doctor's office and see somebody call on a doctor. Okay. So AbbVie, that, that's how we got that, Gary, is to just look up AbbVie. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Lark. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Uh, we've got uh, some, somebody's asked, two different people have asked about how did I create my word cloud? Uh, the best thing, I'm, I actually used an old program, which I don't think you can use anymore because it used uh, Flash and Flash is no longer recognized for web browsers. But I would just Google web uh, word clouds and it'll take you to a couple different programs that do it. Uh, generate your word cloud, save the picture. And then I actually, when I edit my banner, I'm actually using a pro program called Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. And that will allow you to you can edit pictures, you can drop in multiple things, you can do whatever you want. Uh, just, uh, you'll find it very versatile. You can use, they have even have a lot of great backgrounds on there. So you don't have to use a generic background anymore. So uh, canva.com uh, or the other thing is uh, get married, have a daughter who's a UX designer and uh, she has all the graphics and is able to do all that stuff for you. And you just tell her what you want. So those are your options. Uh, to do it, but Canva is really a really easy way to do things. Uh, well, Locke, thank you very, very much. Great information. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I want to thank everybody who's uh, been with us today. Uh, let me just share a few more things before we go. Before you do that, Jeff, anybody that wants the slide deck, Locke Alderson, all one word at gmail.com. I'll be happy to send it to you. All right, Locke Alderson at gmail.com. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's see here next week. Our speaker is going to be Terry Sullivan. He's going to talk about how to tell your key contacts and prospects who you are, what you do, and how you help. Uh, this session, the session next week will not be recorded. Terry does not allow his presentations to be recorded. So you will have to watch them live if you want to watch them next Tuesday at 1 o'clock Central. Uh, all right, I need everybody to please raise your right hand. I know we do this every week, but we'll just remind everybody. Please repeat after me. I, Jeff Morris, promise to always send a personal note whenever I send a LinkedIn request to connect with anyone. This includes when I use my cell phone or my computer. Uh, just please, I'm, you're welcome to link in with me, but if you do that, you need to send me a personal note. Uh, I will not connect with anybody who does not send me a personal note because I want to know where we met at. How did we meet? You saw me at this presentation today. Uh, LinkedIn offers a year of LinkedIn premium for job seekers and mili for uh, military and veterans. And uh, you, uh, there's just a little bit of a re requirement there. Uh, so I put that link in the chat box right now for everybody. Uh, also, there's a great tool if you're trying to figure out LinkedIn Career Explorer that came up with us this past summer on how to take skills that you currently have and maybe find a different job on something else. And so I've put that link also in the chat box so you can uh, download those and copy that uh, to get to that website. Uh, please join Career DFW every week. We're putting on all sorts of programming Monday through Friday, uh, Monday through Thursday, it's at one o'clock, lunch and learn, grab your lunch, come sit and enjoy and find out what we have to talk about. Uh, tomorrow on Wednesday, interviewing Wednesdays, uh, we'll be on session number 10, Building Rapport, Establishing Chemistry with the Interviewer. On Thursday, Resume Tips and Tricks. Um, 
join us. You also have an opportunity to win a free month's use of jobscan.co, which is an interesting program to compare your resume to a job description. Uh, then this Friday, our speaker is going to talk about networking in a virtual world. That's this Friday at 930 at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. And then next Monday, uh, how to network from your network. So uh, special guest speaker, John McDormand, uh, our networking seminars every Monday. We have a different speaker every week. I've got 12 or 15 speakers lined up so far. So every week will be a different speaker talking about networking. So join us next Monday at one o'clock. Uh, if you're not part of the Career DFW or Career USA LinkedIn groups, you're welcome to link in with both of them. The Career DFW LinkedIn group has over 12,900 members. So someday one of you all could be number 13,000. This session has been recorded. It will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and on the Career USA YouTube channel. Please follow us on Facebook. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, just that way you'll find out when things are going and when we publish new items. Uh, on the YouTube channel, it looks like this, Career USA YouTube channel. Uh, you want to click where it says with a green arrow where it says playlist. That should be what comes up first. And then underneath it, you'll see all the different playlists that I've put together. Uh, don't click on the video, but click underneath where that red arrow is and it says view full playlist. And when you do that, up will come a group of or uh, the listing of all the last sessions that we've got recorded in their titles. So you can go back and you can watch any one of those that you'd like. If you're not receiving emails about our workshop, please uh, join us. Uh, send me any, send an email to uh, careerusa plus subscribe at groups.io. I'll put that email address up at the very end of this presentation for you to copy. Uh, please remember, Career DFW, we're just a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have no full or part-time employees. Locke is a volunteer. All of our speakers are volunteer. I'm a volunteer. I don't get paid to do this. I, this is what I do to give back to the community, to help people in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, Career DFW, we survive on donations. It pays for Zoom. It pays for our web hostings, our web names. Please consider when you land your next great opportunity to make a donation so we can continue to do what we do. So thank you very much for joining us today. Hopefully we'll see you later in the week or next week again. Uh, and there's that email address if you need, need it. So, Locke, thank you again. Thanks for everybody else for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.